Welcome to Dwarf Fortress and welcome to the channel. I'm Twisted Logic. It doesn't seem to be. I just want to make sure everything's working properly here. Oh, excellent. Okay. So, this is the Panama Canal. Episode 11. I'm going to just follow Gankilla here for a minute um, and unpause the game. So last night I was playing... Um, okay, Gankilla is going to push the track vehicle. Or at least that's what it says down here. Um, but I don't think there's a track vehicle where he's going. So we'll just see where he's going. Oh, I know where he's going. Okay. There should be a... Right down here, this... These two are drain, but maybe I left conditions on, on these two minecarts. So let's take a look at the hauling menu. Let's see now. It should be center drain one and two. So I'll go into the conditions of these. Yeah, we'll just destroy all these conditions. Done. And center drain 2. Destroy all the conditions. Done. This is the first time they're out of the fortress. Um, since we just opened it up just now. Uh, with the siege being over. Okay, so now that those... Conditions are fixed. Follow Gankula now. Store item in barrel. Excellent. So we have all these puppies in the trees since the last episode. Um, right up by the bridge that we made, right over here. If I come up one level, we got all these dogs and puppies in the trees. So I want to fell some of these trees at priority one. Priority one. I'm just going to fell all these trees right here. This is episode 11 of the Panama Canal Fortress. So last night I was playing Project Zomboid Live, and after I ended the stream, um, in YouTube Studio it did not uh, privatize the, the stream. Uh, which is something normally that happens when you end a stream and when you're doing live streams, it like it switches it from public to private. But basically, like, because there's no more streaming going on, you know, there's nothing, no data being sent out. Good diplomacy here. The mayor Nez meets with the outpost liaison Bismar. Let's discuss the situation. The world is the same as ever. So what we actually need is metal. Uh, games paused right now. We're just in a... Uh, make the request for next year's caravan. So we need, like, usable metal. So not gold. We're just going to do iron, bronze, copper, brass. No brass. Steel. Pig iron. Yeah, black bronze. Bismuth bronze, silver. And I'm just going to have some more coffee now. And also check that we're actually alive. <laughs> See, I'm thinking about what else we need in the fortress here other than metal. I'm pretty sure it's like the main. Are we not live?
Oh, we are live, but I but I manually switched it to private. Okay, I see what's going on here. I have to manually switch it to public now. So now I should be live? Excellent. Very excellent. Okay. Sweet. Welcome to Dwarf Fortress and welcome to the channel and Twisted Logic. Uh, I was just streaming for like maybe two minutes and then realized it was on private. So uh, now it's public. <laughs> this is the Panama Canal episode 11, Murder Road of Insanity. Um, we just have a um, diplomacy here for a trade agreement um, where next year's caravan, I'm just requesting some usable metal bars. Um, basically tool metal. Uh, but I'm not going to go too crazy with it. And then anvils as well. We're going to request steel and iron because we can melt those. Weapons we're going to request... Battle axes. Ammo still can't... We're not going to request any bolts or anything like that. And we're going to request picks as well. As far as clothing goes... Yeah, I'm thinking that we'll request some clothing here. Robes, tunics, togas, vest, cloak. Headwear can be hoods and caps. Gloves and mittens, socks and shoes, trousers, leggings, yeah, also loincloths. Shields I can request. Um, if the shield, if a shields are, if they send me a shield or bring a shield to trade. Um, it should also be a tool metal. This fortress really only has gold in it. Um, there was some... Um, some issue earlier with... Uh, the stream, but it seems to be fixed now. Yeah, I think that's good, so done. That's fine. Okay, so they need cheese. And they're going to offer more for the cheese. So I just set a job for felling all these trees up here, up one level. Um, we have all these dogs. We can even maybe make it a little bit tighter. If we um, erase some of that. Is it like that right there? Let's see. These trees over here we're going to get. Hey, welcome. Thank you very much. Yeah, so last night I was playing Zomboid and I ended the stream. And it stayed, the stream stayed public even though it was supposed to normally... Like the video, the VOD itself is going to stay public. But the stream should then save that as a VOD and go to private. But it never went to private. So I had to manually go in and privatize it. And then I just started streaming now and um, still set to private. <laughs> so I don't know if the first five minutes or so is going to be on the uh, VOD when it saves. But right now, uh, that's fine. Rowan is filling a tree. Trying to save these dogs. Should cut the tree and then let's see. Up one level, yeah, there's like a bunch of puppies and stuff up in the tree here. <laughs> I 
So yeah, as as Rowan is felling the trees, the dogs are falling out. Rurik is also cutting the trees. And then I believe that Bagline is going to be put to rest as well, um, since we found his body earlier. And then we have some new uh, DF hack update here as well. Um, it's telling us about traders ready to trade. Oh, wow, okay. So it's just telling us different things like production mandates, uh, outstanding petition here for a uh, guild hall that we said that we were going to build, but we never did. <laughs> and I didn't read everything on DF hack, all the new updates that came out, but it came out pretty recently. And you, we can go into legend mode again, basically. Uh, let's see what goods we can move over to uh, trade. Yeah, I feel like I have a lot of, a lot of beds, huh? Yeah, because I left beds on repeat, so we have like way more beds than we need. So we'll just sell all those beds. Leather bins, I'm looking for just trade the trade items. Um, the ones that are already uh, checked there are in the auto trade stockpiles, but like this bin right here, that's a lot of money right there. What's in here? It can't just be gold, right? There's got to be something else in this bin. Billion bars. No, that seems to be just gold, but maybe the value of the bin itself. That's a um, it's a higher quality bin. Yeah, we could bring that to trade as well. It's just golden. That's it. Copper cages. I want to melt all those. Okay. Let's do a melt designation on those copper chip cages right there because we need like mad uh, metal silver arrows iron bolts oh yeah we need an ammunition stockpile right here do we have one It's an extra food stockpile. Yeah, right over here. Oh yeah, D DF Roundtable. Yeah, they're great. They started. They finally started talking about DF hack. <laughs> That's awesome. I have a lot of DF hack videos that I created over the years. Um, some, some for the um, Dwarf Fortress Steam Edition. Most of them for. Uh, version 47 as well. Uh, DFX great, but... I really only like to use it for diagnostics. And, like, if I want to just, like... I use it a lot to, to, like, learn things. But not necessarily for um, playing the game. So this is going to be an ammo stockpile right here. 
And we're going to set bins to zero. Oops, punch the mic. Done. So bins are zero on this ammunition stockpile. And uh, let's go into the customization of it. So that's ammo, but not other materials. Bone and wood are off. Has to be metal. And I guess artifact quality off. I don't think I've ever seen an artifact arrow or bolt. And then also right down here, control M. Well, let's see how many we get first. And then we'll turn auto melting on that. We'll enable it. Uh, we got Gankula here, melted metal objects in the forge, uh, in the smelter. Uh, so we have copper bars. Okay, cool. And then I just want to go back up to the, um, oh, let's try to trade first. Broker requested its depot. Yo, what up, what up? Some Texagon. That's a cool name. <laughs> yeah, I was doing a lot of, um... Project Zomboid recently in in attempts to hold on a second. Oh right, okay. So those are those holes are above the butcher. So if we have my asthma, we'll be able to see it here. Um, I was doing a lot of Project Zomboid recently in attempts to um, you know kind of get better at doing live streams, get everything working properly. Anything like that. And plus it's a fun game. I think last time I played Project Zomboid before this, I just kind of didn't make any content. Just played the game. But this time I decided to uh, create some videos about it. So let me unforbid most of this stuff. Or you know what, we'll, we'll continue to continue to fell the trees here. Right around here. Whoa, what's going on here? We got uh, water filling up? We got water in the river here? Uh, that should be from the weather, though. So if I go to the weather here, it has started raining. Weather is cleared. Um, since this river is blocked up, um, I got two different dams in place. There's a dam right here. Uh, there's a second dam right here because this is going to be the channel for the Panama Canal. And then over here, uh, this is the water entry for the fortress, but it all goes down um, into our fortress right here. Comes down, very down, and then comes up a U-pipe. Then we have a uh, line of grates here so that way any um, swimmers can't get into the fortress. Because they'll, they'll be standing on this level here. Um, this is um, elevation minus 10. But the grates are on elevation minus 9. So they can't actually touch the grates above them. And then the water um, just comes up through the grates. Flows down this um, man-made river. Dwarf-made river. Um, down over here. Flows off the map. And that turns all our water wheels. Um, this is about 3,000 power up here. Yeah, total power 3,000, non-fluctuating. Um, so it's a constant 3,000 power. It doesn't fluctuate up and down at all. Um, this one right here is 1,000 power. Um, there's also, if I flip, I can close this bridge and then open this one. All right, and that'll redirect the water. Um, there's no... Um, like flow regulator on this stream right here so if I if I flip the stuff wrong um, then it will start flooding however I built in like a protection here because um, this is open space right here so if this room this level itself elevation minus 8 starts flooding it'll go down this open space into this drain regardless so it'll really never flood and then down here we have um, minecart drains that we set up and welcome Stephen N welcome um, and then we have this uh, minecart roller coaster right here 
So right now this golden minecart is on the track stop right here. Um, if I click on the track stop and then click on this empty space right here, golden minecart, but it is filled with water. So when the minecart is filled with water, you can't see it. Uh, what I'm going to do is forbid this minecart real quick. So forbidden. Okay. And then I want to dig a channel down. I just want to edit this swim trainer. We just drained it. Um, so this is like a swimming roller coaster. They made a standalone video on it. I just want to change one thing about it, which we're going to dig a channel right here. And then down one level. From that spot, we're going to dig just over just like that. And breach. On priority one dig. Yeah, you just... You... It's a game that's definitely... You have to learn it. Um, it it's not like... The Forgotten Beast. Rithig Sag Ilif. Rofa has come. Towering scaly toad. It has a square shell and a bloated body. Its periwinkle scales are small and close set. Beware its fire. Okay, so now we dug this tunnel right here underneath the, the swim trainer. And right here on this tile, I just want to build a um, either floor bars or grate. It really doesn't matter. So I'm going to do floor bars right there and select material after placement. And then we'll just do like um, the material doesn't really matter. But I don't want to use tool metal, so we're going to use gold. Gold is really only good for, like, furniture and expensive things. and So we're doing gold floor bars right there. And then this track stop, I want to change the dump to it. So I'm going to dump east. So what's going to happen is, after the floor bars are built, see it just dumped east, it dumped the water out, and now we can see the minecart again. Um, so it's going to go around... It's going to go around the track once, and then it's going to dump the water and the dwarf out of the minecart. And the water is going to come back down here and feed into the system again, so we're not constantly losing water. And we can also see the minecart at pretty much all the time. Fly kick right here. The pump operator. Building the gold bars. Okay, excellent. That's built. Um, so what we'll do is this lever right here. This lever is the drain for it, so we're going to pull the drain lever. That's going to close off the drain. And then up a couple levels. I think it's this lever, but I'm not entirely sure. Show linked buildings. Yeah, so we're linking to that lever, to that uh, bridge right there, so we'll pull the lever. Uh, once you kind of get a basic understanding of certain mechanics in the game, then the game kind of becomes easy. Um, but it's not like... Dwarf Fortress isn't really a skill-based game. It's a, it's a system and knowledge-based game. So once you learn the systems and, and have game knowledge of the mechanics of the world, then it's easy because, you know... So now we're op we opened up this... Uh, bridge right now and allowed the water to flow in two different directions uh, which we're filling up down here so we have a little bit of waterfall um, that drain for it is closed but we also still have these three minecart drains um, the three minecart drains here how they work is it's almost like a um, atom smasher but only for liquids and so they're constantly if I click on this um, this track stop is dumping to the north. Um, they're all dumping into the wall. And basically what happens is that that is supposed to move um, the water from inside the cart 
into the the direction like one tile in front of it but since there's a wall there it just destroys it like a uh, atom smasher so that's how those drains work that will create like a water flow like you can create like rivers like that however when you unless you're draining a river like this off the map then it won't turn these water wheels like there's some this whole like artificial river that we created here it'll only have like quote unquote flow if it's moving off of the map and not if it's or if it's moving to like a lower lake in the cavern filling up um, but it, with the minecart drains here it won't it won't actually do it um, but what these minecart drains allow for is that uh, they can only they can only actually be filled with water if the water is like level 5, 7 or above. Or actually it's 6, 7 or above. So when they dump it at 6, 7, um, they can't reduce the water lower than 5, 7 of water. So this, I can dump as much water in here as possible. Or just as much water as you can think of, dump into this one room and it'll never go above 5, 7 of water if you let it sit for a minute. Um, so this looks pretty full, so we can switch that lever off. This one right here, pull the lever. And then, yeah, this is ready to turn back on or um, redesignate so we can just unforbid that cart. And now anybody in the fortress who has the push vehicle um, labor will just come along and go into that cart and ride it through the water and gain a tiny bit of swim skill and a tiny bit of like agility and endurance I think strength too uh, but basically like all these sixes now that the water stopped flowing this is now closed all the water down here stopped flowing in but when these six tiles of water eventually make it onto one of these track stops it's going to go in the minecart and then be destroyed until this is all leveled at 5-7 water yep excellent that worked perfectly because he came out black gate went around once we'll see if anybody else uh Is pushing the vehicle. I just want to keep uh, keep an eye on what's going on in the fortress as well, though. So we're making rock crafts, rendering fat, store item and stockpile. Yeah, you just start small with door fortress. Like every fortress I've ever made. I learned something in the first fortress I've ever played like the first time I ever played door fortress uh, I was killed by um, giant dingoes <laughs> the fortress was destroyed by giant dingoes and it wasn't a very good fortress either I had walls around my entrance that were onesie level high oh here we go right here Hero. Hero is going to push the minecart, push the track vehicle. I'm going to follow him around. Excellent. Hero took no damage. There was no risk of in in injury. Um, the water fell back in here, refilling the pool. Okay, it looks like some of the puppies died. There's still things in the tree here. Stray dog skeleton. Uh, just this one tree right here. But we had a siege, and like the siege went at. I guess the, maybe the puppies like got scared during the siege and went up the 
went up the trees, maybe? I'm not entirely sure what happened there. I know there have been reports on the internet about, like, uh... I don't know if it was also puppies or maybe other animals going up the trees, but... The, seemed, the siege seemed to focus on the dogs there. The numbers are just the depth of the water. That's all. Yeah, we still don't have a graphic for the drained riverbed. <laughs> so I'm going to start unforbidding some of this stuff as well. All that can be unforbid. All this can be unforbid here. And uh, let's just see some of these announcements. Something collapsed on the surface. That was one of the trees. Why is that not clearing? Big line. The ghostly wrestler has been put to rest. Okay, this may be a new... This may be part of the new DF hack update, but I'm not entirely sure how to close this announcement. Oh, I guess it's just like a bunch of warnings on this thing right here. That's fine, but I want to clear this. Oh, there we go. Stray dog has been found dead times 13. Puppy times 14. Goose times 4. Some of those were slaughter jobs. Uh, bag line, the rest has been put to rest, and excellent. Very excellent. Okay. Yo, what up, Malik? Mr. Childish is in here. <laughs> so this is, this is not like a new fortress, uh, Malik. We've been... We've been at this one for, uh, we're about five years into the fortress, and it's been like a very productive five years. So this is the uh, Panama Canal that we're going to be digging. Uh, we started digging it right here. Um, what you have to, if you're, if you're having a difficult time imagining like what this game, what we're looking at, I'll zoom out a little bit. Um, and also pause the game. Um, so we have, uh, that's a dwarf right there, cat. Um, this round part here is a tree, but you can imagine it like a Minecraft world, but you're only looking at a 2D version of it. So if I come up in the layer here, now we're looking at like the middle of the tree, up one more, it's like different tall trees. Um, and that, those are like the treetops. That can be like flying, flying creatures as well, and you can also build towers into the sky. In this case right here, uh, this is a um, like a hillside right here, and we're digging down uh, this channel, which is going to eventually be filled with water as a shipping channel. No boats in the game yet. And then here's the entrance of the fortress, and it kind of goes down into the earth several layers before we 
really come into the rooms here uh, where we have some workshops and and like kind of inventory piles set up stockpiles um, dining hall right here this is like a garbage dump more workshops and then another dining hall uh, bedrooms all that jazz If I go to like one of the units, like we'll go to Michael Cobbler here. Um, every one of the units has a character sheet like this. We'll follow him and unpause the game. Uh, looks like he's sleeping right now. Yeah, so character's asleep. 91 years old. Uh, this is like recent, his recent thoughts down here. As well as like his um, skills at different professions and labors. Um, unmet needs as well. We can go to the thoughts tab here. He felt blissful after sleeping in a great bedroom. So the bedroom being great means it's like a certain value. So that could that could be like a um, like a stin like a dingy kind of bedroom, or it can be like he f he felt like he was slept in a personal powerless. Ninety one I don't I don't know ninety one. It's a youthful dwarf. Oh, that's his age. Yeah, ninety one years old, they're dwarves. <laughs> I think that the dwarf lifespan goes to like hundred and eighty, so he's like middle aged. So Rimworld was based off of Dwarf Fortress. It, it is basically like very, very similar to RimWorld. However, you, you can have way more um, characters at once. I'm not 100% sure what RimWorld is limited to. Every time I played RimWorld, I think the max I ever had was like 25 or so. Maybe 30. In Dwarf Fortress, you can go up to having like 250 dwarves. There's really no cap to it. Unless you set the cap. This fortress right now is set to a population of 50. So into if you go into the settings here, so you hit escape, and then game settings, and then I think you go to the game tab here, and then you can like disable and enable different things like artifacts, uh, weather, temperature, but in this list here you can also set uh, right here default, nope that's default restricted path, uh, population cap right now, you can set this to whatever you want. Um, it's basically going to be, can your computer handle that? <laughs> okay. So we didn't change any setting there. We just returned to the game. Jeremy H. is stressed. She feels satisfied at work. Pleasure after satisfying acquisition. Okay, we got lungfish remains. They're bringing all the remains in right now. I'm most interested right now in uh, this stockpile right here, which is the ammo stockpile we just created. All these silver and iron arrows that the goblin shot in the last siege. Although I kind of want to dump that bin. And so we'll make a new dumping zone. Garbage dump, we'll put it right there. Except. Is Gankula doing it? I just moved the whole bin. <laughs> Unforbid that. I think the way we have to do it is dump all of these individually. Pretty sure that's the way we do it. Um, however, this stockpile should be set to uh, reset. Zero bins. Done. Oh, okay. So 
So we can unforbid those right there. Oh yeah, we're getting a lot of arrows here. Excellent. 20 iron arrows. Silver arrows. Basically the geology of this fortress is a lot of obsidian, which is usually pretty valuable. Stone. Um, and then also gold. So gold is great because it's valuable, but also it's too soft to use as uh, tools and equipment. So we've really been struggling with the amount of like usable metal or tool metal that we actually have. Up on the surface here. Let's see where we're at on the surface. They're still pulling all that. Still pulling all that in. It's going to follow Saras. If I go to the skills tab here, you can see that all the um, labors, the levels of the labors they have, and then combat skills. And then we have social skills as well, other skills. Novice swimmer, rusty. Competent musician. Talented climber, rusty. Um, and knowledge there. We got the labor, we got the personality here. And then the relations of like Saras is uh, friends with Jeremy H, friends with Praise of the Sun, uh, friends with oh passing acquaintance with uh, Flykick Nulk Shaky. I was looking for. Um, See in the units list here, we're going to sort by name. And then we're looking for... Yabonzio. Right here. 90 years old. He's proud after teaching pump operation. He was interested near, near a fine door. Felt satisfied at work. Felt lonely being away from friends for too, uh, family for too long. Oh, excellent. So we got all these dogs in, in the... Is this a temple right here? Is that what I set this as? But we saved the dogs from the trees. Yeah, that's set as a temple right there. And let's build walls into the temple. So build, construct, wall. And then I'll just do it right across like this. And then we're going to do golden walls. Since we have a lot of gold. All. So those are going to be all gold walls. Then we can mine out the rock from right here. And we can... Yeah, we'll get this side too. And I'll make more gold walls in there somewhere. <laughs> Perhaps. They got a golden floor already. So it's like, it's a pretty valuable room. Already. Zoom in more? We'll zoom in more. It's magitism. A lot of people like RimWorld better because it's like you can, it's easier to see what's going on, or, or at least it used to be. Um, because in the past, you know, Dwarf Fortress didn't look like this with the graphics. You know, it was like classic view of Dwarf Fortress was all ASCII characters. I always used a um, tile set on top of the ASCII characters. Hey, Solar Aquifer, what up? 
I want to. Uh, right now, we're clearing the top of the fortress from the last siege, bringing all the arrows and puppy skeletons inside. And then I want to close the top of the fortress and start digging towards the North Ocean underground to uh, attempt to figure out where we're gonna we're gonna build the drain for it. That is the current plan. Um, basically when I play Dwarf Fortress I'll get to these certain points of playing the game uh, where some of the things will start feeling like chores like building bedrooms for instance so you have to you have to dig out all these rooms I'm only this is only a 50 fortress uh, 50 Dwarf Fortress so this wasn't wasn't too bad um, but like I'll get to a, pot, a part of the game where it's like Okay, now I gotta do bedrooms for all of them because they're complaining. So I gotta dig out each individual bedroom and then furnish the bedroom. You could do it a lot easier with macros, but it looks like these ones up here didn't get furniture yet. So let's add in some furniture on these guys. So we need a um, cabinet and coffer. Build furniture chest. And then uh, keep building after placement. Use closest material. Let's go like this. Okay, we're out of empty boxes. I gotta make maybe make a job for that. And then we'll do furniture cabinet. Uh, same deal here. Closest material and uh, okay. So cabinets and call and uh, coffers need to be made. But like at a certain point, like you know, doing the bedrooms will feel like kind of like a chore, or like doing a massive pump stack will feel like a chore. So I'm just like, and it kind of like um, deters me to a little bit. Like I know I I know I have to do it, but like, <laughs> so that like even sometimes when you're doing like some of the bigger rooms. Uh, this swim trainer right here is excellent. Stabilized at 5.7 water everywhere. I started playing Dwarf Fortress, I think, about 10 or 11 years ago. And for a while, it was the only game I played. For a very long time, it was the only game I played. Because um, I like I have this um, habit where I get into a game, and I just need to like have an obsession about game mechanics and like figuring out like everything I can do in the game. And when that happened for Dwarf Fortress, it took me several years to figure out a lot of the things. <laughs> And then with the recent update, some of the things changed. Yeah, the macros in Quick Fort, I really like those as... Um, like, I like that they exist. I don't normally use them, but I like that they exist. And that, and that kind of bypasses that kind of um, deterrence that, a lot of, that I get for a lot of people. So they'll use Quick Fort and um, just, you know, make the bedroom layer have it out the macros as well I feel like every time in the past every time I had to use um, macros to build a pump stack I would have to reference my own video to do it <laughs> we're like how do I do this again oh very sweet iron and silver arrows here Okay, let's go to burrows and unpause the burrow. At 40, we have 49 assigned. Yeah, everybody's assigned to the burrow. Excellent. It looks like they made some changes. But we have everyone in the fortress assigned to the burrow. The burrow is now enabled. Where are these cats going?
Stray kitten running around here. We're following the stray kitten. I hear you, Saltwater Expert. I hear you. There's a, there was a lot of um, kind of quality of life stuff that was lost when we went from 47.5 to version 50. Um, although the graphics are very awesome in, in 50. Um, and the new game mechanics when you go down to the um, depths are awesome as well. Um, I hear you on that. Excellent. Okay, so we cleared out most of that stuff. I think that we got all the metal, right? I'm not seeing any arrows. We got two teeth right there. We got a quiver, but there's no metal in that. Uh, stray dog left eye tooth. This is a stray dog left eye tooth. It is coated with sandy clay. I've n Does the eye have a tooth, or is it the tooth under the left eye? I'm not, I'm not understanding that part. <laughs> yeah, it just looks like the skeletons out here. Skeletons and teeth. I think we're good. Pull the lever. Caesar. Going to cooking demonstration. Who's this? Hero's pulling the lever. I thought it was going to be Caesar, but it was Hero. So that lever, closing that lever, should have closed the bridge on the top. So the fortress should be sealed right now. Oh, eye tooth is another name for canine tooth. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, so every every single dwarf in the fortress right here is, um, with the exception of Urst McLogic. No, no, no. I think it's just is it Urst McLogic? But every one of these dwarves is named after one of the subscribers. All well, these are subscriber names. Yeah, Urst McLogic right here. Um, I named that one, but everybody else named the other dwarves. Um, so Yilog the Exuxiator, um, that was one of the subscribers, every one of these. Urismic Logic was the, um, when I did the Hermit Challenge, that was the name I used. Watching a cooking demonstration. Yeah, this is the cooking, cooking guild right here, where everybody's learning how to cook. And I really need an engineer guild. Maybe I can have them maybe right over. This is like the edge of the map right here. All right, this bin. Yeah, we got to dump that bin. And then I think unforbid it. Boldor Snow Peak. You want me to check on him? Boldor Snow Peak right here. 55 years young. <laughs> Le legendary pump operator. High master fish dissector. You must have started as a high master fish dissector because we don't do any of that in the fortress. Competent organizer, adequate stone cutter, rusty, novice cook, rusty, novice stone carver, rusty, legendary pump operator. This is the pump operator guild right here, and everybody in the fortress is just learning pump operation. Uh, we'll turn 
Yeah, start pumping manually. Start pumping manually. And start pumping manually. Um, these pumps right here normally move water. Um, this, this game has a very, very intricate water system where water will flow up and down levels and try to equalize pressure and everything like this is the water right here that's moving with the numbers you can also turn the numbers off if I click on that button right there um, but I find it easier to see when I have the numbers on um, the seven is representing that 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 one tile is full from floor to ceiling of water um, the one depth of water so one out of seven that would be like a puddle of water on the ground and then all the other numbers are everything in between. A dwarf can pass through anything that's three seven of water or below. So that's like kind of like a little bit higher than waist high. And anything four seven of water or higher, they're gonna have to swim. Um, this right here is like teaching them how to swim by putting them in a minecart and riding them through like a roller coaster. <laughs> uh, but these pumps will normally take water from the level below and then bring it up one Z level and over and then set pressure to that level. So it's like a very intricate water system here. Right now we're taking water from the surface and and bringing it down. I have many in-depth guides on on water in this game, and all different things, all different guides and stuff on on the the videos on the main channel. Fortress is currently closed. We have no. We got the gold chain there, but nobody's on it right now. Okay, let's just pause real quick. We got all this obsidian from a previous. So let's unforbidden that and then go to zone to make sure that's not a zone. That was burrows by accident. So this zone right here, we're just going to delete it. Enter. Um, this zone right here, we're also going to delete. Unforbid that. But then re forbid it, but the arrows are not forbidden. You understand? The arrows are unforbid, but the bin itself is forbid. This stockpile right here, zero bins. So hopefully they take all the barrel, the um, arrows out. We'll know in a second if we can do that. I'm pretty sure that's how you do it. We'll see if anybody picks up the job. If not, then... Yeah, the bear was cool. He didn't last long. <laughs> but I like the idea of having a bear. What happens in Dwarf Forges is like every time... It happens to me often. Um, I see a very cool animal and I'm like, Oh, I gotta have this animal. And then it dies very fast. Yeah, I should re really just put like a puppy or kitten on the chain. Sometimes I accidentally scroll with the ma I, I, you can scroll up and down with the layers through with the uh, mouse wheel. Sometimes I accidentally do that. Um, so this one right here, we're just going to turn on melting. So control M. Melting is now designated on this stockpile. Um, so that is a feature that's built into DF Hack, which is a command line tool that uses Lewis scripts to interact with Dwarf Fortress. Oh, empty bin command. I think that I think they'll get it out of there. Um, looks like let's take a look at the stock screen right here. 
Um, we have a decent number of things here. I'm just going to go like this right here. So just on the stock screen, tell everybody to melt all the bolts. Since we don't have archers, archers are currently still broken. So in version 47.5 of the game, you would go into the military screen and in your each squad you'd be able to give them or assign ammunition. So you could say you can squad A can use 200 iron bolts for combat and maybe you'd have 200 wooden bolts for training. Um, but that screen is no longer in this version of the game here. And that's where you would also tell them to carry water or... You'd tell them to carry water or um, food as well. Ozma the Red, Stonecrafter, has created Cut Amrol Tell em Shit. <laughs> An obsidian puzzle box. She offers it to the Channel of Savages. Excellent. Very excellent. Let's take a look at that shortly. Um, first, I want to go to Ozma the Red's room. Ozma the Red, rooms, decent quarters. Uh, this one right here. Okay, so let's build a piece of furniture. Display case. Right there. Artifacts. Speaker submerges the most sufferings. This is an obsidian puzzle box. All craft horsemanship is of the highest quality. It is encrusted with oval cut jelly opals and tampered baguette cut smoky quartz. Studded with gold, decorated with rope reed, and encircled with bands of oval obsidian carbachons and dog bone. Oh, jeez. This is a crazy puzzle box right here. This object is adorned with hanging rings of jelly opal and menaces with spikes of obsidian. On the item is an image of a, of a smooth pebble in obsidian. Okay. On the image is an, on the item is an image of Nulk, the dwarf, and a basalt mug in gold. Nulk is raising the basalt mug. The artwork relates to the masterful basalt mug created by the dwarf Nulk for the channel of sav savages at Murder Road of Insanity in the late winter of fifty one. Excellent. That's awesome. So Nulk in the year 51 created a uh, mug here, a basalt mug, and raised it high. And this puzzle box is uh, depicting that. Very awesome. And we're going to add that to Ozma the Red's room. Um, as soon as they build the display case there. And we're also going to double check that that's Osmo's room. Yeah, we're in the right one. Cool. Assign a new item to the display case. And this is a puzzle box, so I think it's under... Um... Let's see here. I think it's under, like, toys, right? Right here. <laughs> Catamaral Telmo Telom shit. I'm gonna sign that. It's a silly name, but a cool object. Is it easy to fulfill the dwarves' unfulfilled needs? 
Some of them are easy. And, yes, excellent. The puzzle box is there, and it actually does have an image. Um, some of these, um, some of these, you can't even tell that it's uh, they don't have graphics, like this one right here. Um, whatever this object is, I think this may be the. Take a look at this one. This is the uh, this is like a right a golden right gauntlet right here on this display case, but there's no graphic for it. Um, some of the needs are easy to fulfill. Let's go to like um, primitives, pretty new. Saltwater aquifer. Unmet needs: help somebody, make merry, be with family, be with friends. Pray to Monum Liberdell, or however you say that. But I can also go to, uh, I believe it's Thoughts. Uh, felt self-pity after being unable to make Mary for so long. Uh, that These ones, like some of these are easier in larger fortresses. Since I set the cap to 50, there's less opportunity for saltwater aquifer to meet somebody to be able to make merry with um being away from friends for too long if we go to relations here uh, saltwater aquifer only has like passing acquaintances here because he's been hard at work the entire time if i give him time to hang out in the temple hang out and we have less work going on we just basically give everybody a break by doing less work Less work orders, less crafting. I believe the crafters are like very hard at work and they haven't been able to relax for a while. Um, but they'll be able to like when they're socializing, meet people, make friends, and then that need for the friends is taken care of. Yeah, right now, right now, saltwater aquifer has no job, so he's just kind of wandering around. But eventually he's going to be like, okay, maybe I'll just go pray at the temple. Or what we have to do right now is, um, I forgot to do, disable burrows. So right now, uh, Saltwater Aquifer is going to an attend meeting right down here. Probably going to go yell at some noble. Or cry on the noble's shoulder. <laughs> Something like that. Stressed. There are stress levels. You can bring them back. Misting isn't really over. I wouldn't say misting is overpowered. It just gives it just gives them one more thing to be happy about. <laughs> so water aquifer is about to go crazy. No, no, you're not. <laughs> Attending meeting. I have no idea who is uh, who you're looking for. Maybe Naz. Anyway, Mike Oxlong, the pump operators, melting metal objects. So in this metalworking uh, metal forge right here, I want to create. Axes and picks. So we're going to go here. Uh, you know what? I just want to make picks on repeat. So instead of going into work orders, we're just going to get a new task in this one forge. And we're going to make uh, weapons and ammunition. Okay, we're going to make it out of silver. And we're just going to make silver battle axes. And we're going to put that on repeat. And we're going to tell it that's high priority with that uh, exclamation right there. Because we have like no... Oh, uh, DR's doing it. He picked up the job right away. Forge Silver Battle Axe. And he's running. Nice. Because we have like no axes in the fortress and we have a lot of trees that we need to fell. So we need to, like right now, we need to get our tools uh, fetched up and in order. And then we going to dig the tunnel north um, to the North Ocean. Uh, all the way up here. 
This is, I believe, in, it's an 11 by 3 map. I think that's what it is. So it's 3 wide. And then it's 11 long. So this is the very top of the map. And I'm going to hold down the S key. And that is the bottom part of the map. And then if I go to the world view, um, we this is the fortress right here. Panama Canal. Um, this map, I have a video on how to make the world map into Dwarf Fortress. It's like a, it's basically like a um, world generation that you copy, put into your world generation, and then you can you can change parameters around and stuff like that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but we do have um, dark human pits. We have goblins up here, elves, right in the area. But that right there, right where Panama Canal you'd expect it to be, that's our fortress. And the tile itself is just ocean to ocean. So like right here, you know what, I'm going to go to the map. I'm going to go to the fortress where we dug south. I want to do it on the same level that we dug south on. Should be off of this staircase. Yeah, right here. So this is the tunnel south that we did. So this layer, what is this? Layer 22. Let's zoom out a little bit. Okay, and then we're just going to dig in. We're going to dig some tunnels, just like this. That's all priority one. That's going to be the pump stack right there. I should really I should really mark that out so we they don't actually dig it if we breach it. Um, so let's go to mining. And then change this to blueprint mode. Oh, that was wrong. Yeah, that's how you do it. Okay. Just erase all that. That's fine if it's not on every single level. But we need to like toggle it from from regular mode to blueprint mode. Just like that. Okay, so we'll do it on every level. So I'll come all the way up. Okay, right here, and then we're just going to scroll down through the layers until we get to the very bottom. Hundred and twenty-two, uh, hundred and twelve layers. That's how big we got to do the pump stack. About. Uh, we don't necessarily need magma for the goal of this fortress. However, it always makes things easier when you have magma. Savak is pumping, as well as Dil the Druid and Miramel. Where's my coffee? Mirror Mill, the pump operator. Uh, I want to go back down to that same level. What was that? Negative 22? Yep. So on negative 22 right here. It's all door right, Gambro. Door right. Let's switch that to regular mining. So no longer blueprint mode. And we'll do like a landing area just like this. And then from there, we're going to dig a, a one by tunnel north. The doors are moving fast. <laughs> so, how far north do we want to take this? Oh, cool. Okay. 
Yeah, this should just be this should just be rock all the way. Oh, right there. So 275. That's the max. So we'll come back a little bit. 180 we'll do. 181. We'll just come up in the layers now to find the ocean. Now I can just gotta like find the best place for a drain. There's a clownfish right there. <laughs> oh, this is the best. Wait, is it? No, we want to go down more. I want to do the drain like right here-ish, or maybe right here looks like a really good spot for the drain. So maybe a room like this. It doesn't have to be that big. That looks like a good size and location. Okay, then we'll dig stairs down. All the way down to negative 22. And then we'll just see if we get any kind of um, aquifer when, we, when we're digging this. Uh, basically, stone that leaks water. Well, hopefully we don't get stones that leak water, but we'll see. Osmond the Red's digging. So right down here, uh, where we made the landing, I just want to put in some doors. So we'll put a door right there. Come up a little bit, put another one. Up a little bit more. Put one like right there. The doors will prevent flooding. So the, the so water won't pass through a door unless it's open. the dwarven child four years old holding obsidian door going to construct it Zariki the dwarven child eight years old playing make-believe oh storing item in bin <laughs> Mandritism. Digging. There's a long way to dig. So let's dig off a little section right there. 
Is this about halfway? Yeah, I think this is about halfway. Right there, we'll dig off a little section just like that. And then orders. Let's see here. All the silver in the fortress right now should be turned into battle axes. Let's make a new work order for the uh, metalsmith's forge. Want a gold mine cart? Ten of them? Yeah, that's fine. Ten gold mine carts. We can reduce it. it doesn't have to be ten. We'll do eight gold mine carts. <laughs> yeah, there's no there's no alcohol age limit for dwarves. Dwarves require alcohol. They'll die if they don't get it. A vile force of darkness has arrived. Sorry. We got elephants here? Are they part of the vile, vile force of darkness or are they just creatures? Let's see. You for the units list. And then we'll go to the others tab. And we have some goblins here. Those are invaders. Oh, the elephants are wild animals as well as the troll and blind cave ogre. So let's zoom over to the to the um, goblins here and follow them right here on the side of the map. Well, it's a little bit hard to see when they're walking around. Looks like they're shooting arrows. Combat report and then goblin crossbowmen. Oh, that's old? Okay. Old reports. Anyway, the top of the fortress is closed and everybody important is inside. Looks like the goblins are just like shooting at the, uh. Shooting at something here. Up in the tree? They have an elephant corpse there, so somehow the elephant corpse got up into the tree with a bunch of goblins. <laughs> I don't know if the elephant climbed the tree or... <laughs> anyway, they're sealed outside. So let's see who is, uh, who's digging here. Mangitism, Codorex. Excellent. And then that space we just dug out uh, is going to be a new stockpile. Accept that, and this is going to be a custom stockpile. Uh, it should be furniture and siege ammo. Minecarts. Material. Only golden minecarts. All qualities. Total qualities, all. Disable artifact on both of those. So they're going to bring the, the golden minecarts to that stockpile preemptively as a, as a location to store them. And then when we actually do the drain up here way more north, um, then it'll be halfway hold already.
Magitism continues to dig the tunnel north. We must build the drain for the North Ocean. Okay, let's see how many... Let's go to stocks here. Ammunition. Okay, well, we're going to reset that to melt all of those. What did we create? One silver battle axe? Is that what we did? <laughs> okay, we need more of those. We got twelve invaders. A uh, wooden furnace right here. This is what's going on. We need to make charcoal. We don't have charcoal production right now, so we're going to turn that on to repeat. And then once we get charcoal, we can melt more metal objects. Oh, he may be just melting all the iron right now. He's melting silver right now. Maybe what we can do is uh, dig a walkway here and here so he doesn't have to go out and around the whole jam. So it'll make pathing a little bit easier for him. Uh, we can also do one right here. Yeah, more efficient pathing there. Silver bolt. Okay. They have to melt like 10... I think it's like 10 bolts of one ammunition type before they get one bar out of it. So it's like 0.2. I'm pretty sure it's 0.2 per bar. Blue Jay in a cage. This is, uh, whose office is this? This is a Sendo in Mike Oxlong's office. I believe it's uh, a Sendo's Blue Jay. Stefan is making charcoal. Oh, we can melt these puzzle boxes as well. Copper puzzle box there. So we don't have a stockpile set up for books, it looks like, or toys, or music. Feather tree egg yolk, I have no idea if that goes into a, a food stockpile or what, but it looks like it's just liquid on the ground. And then the basalt here with the house icon, that means it's part of the building. So the trade depot it's, itself is made out of the basalt. Like when I go to this um, right here, this obsidian piece with the house icon right there is part of the building. Iron bolt 
uh, with this icon and the charcoal with this icon means it's part of the job. Uh, looks like we need a stockpile for gold chains as well. This stockpile right here, let's go to customization of it um, and disable minecarts. Um, so that's every piece of furniture type except for minecarts now. Actually, you know what? I think I was going to delete that stockpile. Yeah, because this is a furniture stockpile right here. Um, golden minecarts right there. Yeah, this whole stockpile, delete it. Enter. Then we're going to build doors. All in those spots right there. Uh, new zone. Uh, we, I guess we could do meeting area zone. Click the wrong spot there. Meeting area right here. Just like that. Except new guild hall. There's going to be an engineer's guild as soon as I find it on the list here. So Alt S to search. ENG Engineer Hall. And then we can build some statues in there. Furniture, statue, use closest material, keep building after placement. Yeah, we need to make more statues. <laughs> It's a start. So let's take a look at work orders here. So make a rock statue. Let's look at the conditions of that. Amount of rock statues is less than three, and then we're going to make six. So, yeah, less than three is fine, but. Bump that up to eight. Same with coffers and cabinets. We'll just bump that up to five on both of those. Uh, beds we don't need any more of. Lavish meals we're gonna we're gonna turn up a lot. Make like 40 lavish meals. Let's see the condition of it. Amount of unrotten cookable items is greater than 40. Satisfied for next check. Amount of unrotten prepared meals is less than 30. Not satisfied. And then we're going to make 40. So let's turn that up until it like less than 50. Still like that. So if it's less than 50, and we have 40 ingredients, now we'll do 60. Yeah, there we go. So if we have less than 60 lavish meals, and enough ingredients for 40 of them, we're going to create 40. Uh, we'll just turn up bins and barrels by one each. So this is, if amount of empty barrels is less than 3, make 3. We'll change that to two. Amount of empty barrels and bins is less than two, then we're going to make three. Uh, we'll switch it to four. So if less than two, make four. So that means that we should have six on hand once we get to, to either five or six, about. Okay.
Oh, okay. So some of those bolts are that are coming up in the stock menu are currently being fired by these goblins. We really need to create some kind of um, killing trap for them. What do you guys think we should... What kind of killing trap should we build? If you have any suggestions, let me know. I was thinking that we could um, drown them. That would be nice. We could also kill them with fire. I can make it like a gar garbage cannon. <laughs> Is anybody digging right now? I don't think so. Okay, cool. So nobody's digging, so let's check on that right there. So I'm in the mining designation mode right now, so I can designate mining. And in that mode where I can designate it, um, it's going to reveal wet tiles, wet stone. I'm just checking in the layers right now. What is this rock? A oh, quartzite. Okay, yeah, that all looks dry, which is great. So coming up through the layers now... Um, to this location where we dug the room. Right here. Um, these wet tiles right here are not necessarily telling us that there's an aquifer there. Uh, if we come up one level, there's water there. So those are always going to be wet regardless. So we can dig those out like that. And then at the bottom of the stairs here, just in case, we're going to put a door. Right at the bottom. So if anything up there floods, then it'll be stopped right there. Fletcher. Fletcher is going to dig the northern drain. Okay, now I'm going to dig out the same... No, nope, we need to get that wall as well. And then the same size room, just down one level. Right there. Hold on, we're going to erase these ones. And then we're also going to erase that one right there. And build construct wall uh, there and there. And then we're going to build a door in right there. Oh, I got to build the wall first. Okay. Then we're going to channel down right here. And 
Yeah, and then this one right here, we're going to dig out that one tile right there. So that'll be the multi-tiered drain, kind of like how we did in the south. If you saw that, uh, we're doing the northern drain right here. I feel like this one should be in the right area. Let me zoom out a little bit and check. So that's the drain right there. I'll leave the mouse on the drain. We'll scroll all the way up to the top. Oh, it's like... I see... Down one, down a second one. Yeah, this would have been a better spot for it. Right over here. Up one, up two, up three. Um, that's okay. This one should still work pretty well. We can always make another one. DR there. Okay, right on this tile right here, we're going to build a track stop. Physical track stop. Dumping to the north. Highest friction. Yeah, any material should be fine right there. Um, we're also going to do another one, dumping to the north, highest friction on uh, a few tiles up here. So this one, dumping to the north again, right there, dumping to the north again, right there. And then if we need to up it, we can build like, we can build a wall tile, wall like across these three spaces right here. So if we wanted to up it, we can build those three wall tiles and then put three more track stops on these three. We need to go to build, construct a uh, ramp. And we're going to build ramps all across this row, just like that. Up on this level. Channel down, just like that. We're going to build a door right here that's going to block the flow of water down. Uh, this one, we're going to resume the construction. Uh, this track stop right here, we're going to go into the hauling menu. Come all the way down in the hauling menu. We're going to make a new route. Rename this one. North. M drain zero one. Oops, I hit the grave. I hit the wrong button there. Open DF hack. I hit the grave key. So north M drain zero one. Okay, and we're gonna uh, we're gonna assign a stop to the route. So this is gonna be a uh, not a physical stop, but like where the minecart is actually placed, and we're gonna place it on top of the physical stop, just like that. Now we're going to set the condition, disable everything. Okay. Now we're going to assign a mine, done. And we're going to assign a mine card that's not assigned to anything else. Uh, this one right here. 
Okay, so they should bring a, a minecart to this stop. Put it there. This track's going to dump to the north. Creating the minecart drain. Is that a ramp right there? We need, we need another ramp. Build construct ramp. Right there. Um, now that these ones are channeled out, channel out the next row, just like that. You get it, when you channel down like this, and you do it one row at a time, it's not going to allow any doors to fall, or it's going to it's going to kind of not that it's going not going to allow them to fall, but it's going to be the safest way to do it. You just do one row at a time. If you do too much at once, then it'll possibly cause like a cave in or something like that or maybe a dwarf is going to stand on this tile and then somebody's going to mine the tile he's standing on fall down break a leg something like that uh these three track stops we're going to do very similar setups so hauling menu new route North Train 2. Set the location right there. Assign a card that's not assigned to anything else. That one. And remove all the conditions. Done. New route. North Train 3. Set that right there. I made the wrong icon there. Yeah, that one's good. And this one's going to be North Train 4. Set that one right there. Conditions destroy. Oops. Remove all the conditions and then and then new minecart right here. When you do this, they have to be metal minecarts. If you do it with wooden minecarts, you're not going to have a good time. So those minecarts are going to be set there. This one and those four. Or those three up here where we dug the channel we're gonna build a retract bridge so build construction and bridge this one is gonna be retractable this icon right here we're gonna set that right just like that any material is fine for that I like to use stone it's gonna be an obsidian bridge Okay, units. Place track vehicle, hero, Gankula, Michael Cobbler, and Yubonzio. Follow Gankula. Gankula has high stamina. Disdains harmony. Disdains leisure time. Values tranquility. He's resilient. And he disdains decorum. I want to spend more time with family. I'm lonely. Pulling the golden minecart. Very thirsty. I 
Oh, Genkil gave up to drink. Left the minecart right there. Michael Cobbler hauling the minecart. See how far Michael Cobbler gets. Um, I don't think they used this stockpile right here. I don't think they did. This is zone right here. Let's take a look at it. Citizens and long-term residents only in that temple. Um, the, there should be a furniture stockpile right around here somewhere. This one. Uh, what we didn't do and we should have is toggle a give to. Yeah, this one right here, give to, and then go to the other stockpile. So that stockpile should give to this one. Give to stockpile 39. That's what we should have done. Maybe 40 minutes ago when I made it. <laughs> it's alright though. Uh, we may still have to bring more minecarts over to the north train. Let me let me see how many we have in the south train. Uh, which uh, there we go. Okay, so we have five in the south train. We can add more if we want to. I think that five. I think it was good. He felt bitter dwelling upon wearing old clothes. He was blissful at remembering sleeping in a great bedroom. Boldor Snow Peak, pump operator, has created Does Risen, an obsidian specter, uh, scepter, an obsidian scepter. She offers it to the channel of savages. Okay. This is an extremely long journey for them to go to the North Drain, it looks like. So it's going to take them a while to do it. It looks like Gankula gave up about halfway. Or a little more than halfway. Um, so somebody else will pick up that job. Eventually. Negative 22, that's where we're looking. There we go. Yeah, let's take a look at that artifact. This is an obsidian scepter. All craft dwarfmanship is of the highest quality. It is encrusted with cushion jelly opi opal carbachons, decorated with rope reed and encircled with bands of cushion obsidian art carbachons. Copper and date palm wood. This object menaces with spikes of obsidian, jelly opal, smoky quartz, and yellow zircon. zircon. Samwise Ganja has created a masterpiece, Gabbro Earring. Michael Cobbler also made a masterpiece, Obsidian Crown. Uh, 
Oh, it's like defaulting me. Hold on a second. I see. Okay, we need more coal. We need more iron. Okay. Old our snow peak. This is his room right here. Oh, okay. We need to get him a. a piece of furniture there a uh, cabinet as well if we can excellent so now you've got a cabinet coming in we also need to do a furniture display case uh, right there and he also needs a statue old furniture statue right there I guess at some point we should build a library. Oh, this room right here. Okay, cool. A new item to display, and we want it to be uh, that scepter that he made. I think that it does it have its own. Scepters. I can't collapse that. Does risen the scepter? Smeared coal is it's it's his human name. <laughs> Let's put item on display, I saw that. Uh, before I Miramel is going to construct the building. We'll see what it is. Oh, sweet. Okay, so the rest of the minecarts are, are now in that stockpile that we needed earlier.
Okay, let's see the north drain here. We got three minecarts in place. Rough Obsidian Bridge is waiting for construction. That cat. I think that cat messed up the whole thing. Is it waiting for construction or waiting for material? It's got three obsidians there. Make rep coffer, store item stockpile, rock cabinet, store stockpile item. Let's go to the pump here. Pump operators disable these from pumping manually. Look at the value of the temple that we're highlighting here. It's like fluctuating randomly. It's valuing between 5,000 and... We're going to delete that temple. Let's remove it. Enter. A bunch of dogs fighting in there. <laughs> I'm just going to recreate the temple. So meeting area. Just like that. Uh, you know, we'll do it like this. That'll be the temple. Except. Just new temple. Um, no specific deity. The sandal to rip. And then new mall. Nope, let's cancel that. Select material after placement right there. It's going to be gold. Okay, so new gold wall coming in there. Maybe this one will suspend it and then cancel it. So we'll have a double door there, one door there, one door there. Dig out this wall. Just like that. And then we'll replace that with a gold wall. We might as well do this one too. We'll do it like that. We'll leave that one wall uh, tile there so that way it can connect to the door because doors need a wall next to them normally you can you can create a situation where you have doors without walls um, but whenever there's a block update it kind of just say it breaks the door I want to make a uh, let's let's do this. Let's make a dog room over here, right off of the um, butcher butchery. We'll make a room just like that for dogs <laughs> and puppies. And it's the dog and dog and puppy fun room right next to the butcher. And then build construction. Uh, 
Bon. Yeah, it should be fine. Just like that. Nice. So this one tile right here, they should be able to access it from this. Standing on this tile, they should be able to reach the face of this wall. Or maybe they'll do it there or there if they built depending on the order. But this one right here, I left that gap so that way they can stand here and build this one. Yeah, we're going to get some meat. Dog meat. Building it out right now. So I'll build a door in there. New zone, pen and pasture, right here. Except, add animals. Or four ships version uh, forty-seven point five. You can go up and down this list with the mouse and keyboard, and it's like you don't have to use your mouse hand for every single thing like in version 50 here I have to click every single one of these I can't there's no way I can use uh oh I can they added keyboard support right here see how faster it is so this part of the quality of life that came back it looks like very excellent But you see how faster it is instead of using the mouse and the scroll wheel? No bunnies. Oh, I could probably name, I could probably sort them by, uh... <laughs> probably sort them as well. There's a dog right here. Well, I'm glad that this is back into the game. Very excellent. I don't know if that's a DF hack thing or if a dwarf fortress thing. I'm not entirely sure, um, but it's working. So we got all our, our um, puppies and dogs in there. Smooth stone it. Some of them are still being brought over here. Uh, Ascendo, pen and pasture, the stray dog. Asindo, the creator. Oh, how do you say that? Ato Trim. Kivish. Dolil. I 
Excellent. So we got all our uh, meat production over here. All those dogs are, dogs are being taken out of the temple. Nice. We got four pieces of obsidian here, so it looks like they're just like taking it from. Just looks like they're taking forever to do it. We're just gonna follow Mike here, and uh, I'm gonna use the restroom. I think what happened was that uh, the, when I built the bridge, it used like the the very farthest materials instead of the very closest. Um, it's something I noticed when we were doing something over in the South Drain. I don't remember entirely what I was doing in the South Drain, but it but I noticed it was either. Um, I think it was like when DF hack select the materials, it was it was defaulting backwards. I think that's probably what happened here too. Oh, this wall's almost smoothed. Excellent. They're getting really good at smoothing, so we can smooth more things. Uh, we smoothed the bedrooms already? Yeah, all the bedrooms are smoothed. Excellent. Yeah, this worked layer. There we go. Should be able to smooth that in no time. Yeah, we're just waiting on uh, Mike Oxlong. 
waiting on him to uh, finish this bridge up. You can do it, Mike. <laughs> It may be worth it to destroy the bridge and then recreate it with the closer stones. But I'm just going to follow him and see how far he's going. Damn, where, where the heck is he going? All the way there? Wow. So there's a quantum stockpile right there. Let's unfor let's make sure the whole quantum stockpile is unforbid. Um, this is the list. Just basalt and obsidian. Yeah, for some reason they're going. He's going like all the way down there. I think it's something to do with. Um, I think it has to do with. DFAC. Could be wrong. We're going to cancel the construction. Build a new bridge. Retractable. Select material after placement instead of use closed system. We're going to do that. And then fillite. All fillite. The fillite should be like right down here. Yeah, it's right here, so. Did he have one more to bring over? Was that even faster? I don't know. <laughs> it could have been the last one that he was carrying, but... We'll see. Saltwater Aquifer attend meeting. Stressed. Felt euphoric due to inebriation. Didn't feel anything after seeing Goblin's dead body. I don't mind stirring things up. Absolutely, yeah. So if you increase the population of the fortress, then things will get done faster. You're 100% right. Um, because there'll be more, you know, dwarf power, basically. So when you have, um, say we bring a caravan, comes to trade to the fortress, and they set up at our trade depot, and then we kill everybody and break the depot. There's going to be a set number of items there. Let's say it's 500. If we only have 10 dwarves, then those 10 dwarves have to move all those things to stockpiles. It's still 500 items, as opposed to if we had 100 dwarves, then it's only 5 trips per dwarf, as opposed to, like, 50 trips. You know what I mean? Um, but... You know, I didn't want things to go, like, completely out of control with the fortress, so I just left it at, uh, 50, so that way we can... It's, I feel like it's a nice number. I can go to 150 or 200 dwarves, but then, you know, everybody will get lost in the mix, and you'll never see your character, <laughs> you know? Boldar Snow Peak. It's content after sleeping in a bedroom like a personal palace. So earlier, I think that was um, a great bedroom. I could be wrong here. Let's go to thoughts. Content dining in a legendary dining room. Eating a fine dish. Wearing old clothes. Still wearing old clothes here. Improved cooking. Yeah, we need to get new clothes in the fortress, but...
Yo, what up, what up? I appreciate everybody who is um, joining me on this live stream. Uh, I'm trying to get better at live streaming in general, so if I miss a chat from somebody or uh, something like that, uh, try not to feel bad. I'm trying to work on that. <laughs> so I appreciate everybody who did stop by. Uh, we're still streaming. Just kind of acknowledging uh, that I did miss some chats here. Construction inactive, waiting for construction. Okay, cool. So everybody's smoothing floors and walls right now. Let's go see them. Yeah, a lot of it's getting done. I can erase some of that to get somebody to use that bridge job, so we maybe we don't need to smooth the refuse stockpile. Or that or that door. Maybe skip that storeroom and this one. And we'll skip like all of these workshops as well. Yeah. I can always redesignate the smooth jobs later on. So it's not a big deal. Yeah, sometimes I get locked into the game there and I and I like don't read chat messages, so sorry about that. <laughs> we got a petition here. Grand Guild Hall for the Company of Blockades. The Pump Operator Guild wants an upgrade. We could approve that request. Uh, this is the Pump Operator Guild right here. Uh, I'm not really sure what we can build in there. Yeah, I think if you go to the jobs, if you... So you used to press J for jobs, but now it's going to justice. I think you go to tasks. This is how you do it. Yeah, like these tasks down here haven't been um, taken up by anybody yet. Is that right, or is it labor? No, no, no. Yeah, constrict building rough fill light bridge didn't get taken up right now because everybody's still smoothing. Forge iron battle axe, smelt native ore. We can speed it up a little bit, just like this. So then I'll just reset everybody. I can always redesignate that smoothing later on. Um, but now everybody's going to like eat or drink or sleep. Some of them are still smoothing. Is that down here? Yeah. I'll let them do these, these ones down here. And then that list should update at a certain point. Liquidated is ecstatic. See the thoughts of liquidated. She felt insulted 
dwelling upon an agreement to construct a guild hall for the barricaded hall being abandoned. What? This is the guild hall right here. Petition outstanding. Yeah, that's the pump operator guild. This is the engineering guild. You can smooth stone the engineering guild. And maybe build more statues. Oh, you're eating eel? The eel? No, furniture and then statue. Closest material. Let's do the corners like that. What? That's a clumsy cat? <laughs> I finished up some work. It was very... I, was, I am very satisfied. Blissful after sleeping in a fantastic bedroom. Blissful dining in a legendary dining hall. I feel like the dining hall gets way better bonuses to the dwarves than the mist generator. Mist generator just adds like one more thing for them to be happy about. But like the dining hall, if you do dining hall and and um, you're also doing uh, lavish meals. Then it's like your legendary dining hall, lavish, very lavish meal. Um, I think there's like one or two other things connected to it. Praise the sun, chief medical dwarf. I learned about cooking. I am very satisfied. Satisfied improving cooking. Oh, this guild hall right here. I never said it. Did I? I'm going to the details of this guild hall. Only members can visit this guild if, if guild is established. We always set this to, uh, or at least I, I always set it to... Um, Citizens and long-term residents only. I could do all visitors welcome is fine, but citizens and re long-term residents only. So that way, if they're not an engineer, they can come in there and still learn about engineering. That's how we get the cooking so high and the pump operator so high. Everybody just hangs out in here talking about cooking. Whether they're a cook or not, they come in there and then they passively gain cooking skill. Or engineering skill. Or, in this case, pump operator skill. This is a basalt statue of oysters. Let's go to level 20. No, no, no. Check out here. Right up here. Waiting for construction. Units. Incorrect statue. Construct building. Saras is now on the job. I've been alright. Pleasure remembering a satisfying acquisition. Yeah, see, it's so much faster now that the I chose the stones that are close.
stress is emotionally distant, poor focus, high stamina, slow to love, good analytic ability, avoids excitement, no official position, healthy. Talented Mark's Dwarf, Rusty. Building that bridge way faster than the last guy. <laughs> it's the eleventh of Galena, late summer in the year one fifty six. Constructing the North Ocean Drain. Excellent, she's building the bridge right now. Construction initiated. I gotta build a lever for it. Show linked buildings? None. Show linked buildings? Go to it. Oh, very cool. Okay, so I already built the lever. I just gotta hook up the lever now. So this north drain right here. Uh, link lever. Right up here. Not complete yet. Partially constructed. constructed we're gonna drain the ocean um, as soon as this is complete a little bit in the north and see how those three or four mine cards do draining the north ocean Just complete. Now I gotta build them. Um... Link the lever. Right there. Ascendo. Ascendo Jade Pick. Linking the bridge to a trigger. Holding obsidian mechanisms. Sendo is also the manager of the fortress as well. Is that linked? Oh, he's going to link the other side now. Ascendo is married to Mike Oxlong. Let's go to the relationship tab. Husband is Mike Oxlong. Um, 
Oh, the, the outpost liaison is um, Ascendo's younger sister. Oh, and that's right, he's got all these pets as well. Or well, she's got all these pets. Friends with Fletcher, friends with Savak. Bulldor Snowpeak is his friend. Roan is his friend. So is Caesar. Urs McLogic. Urs McPreach. Yabondio is his friend. Flykick Gator. Uramond is a close friend. Shaky's a friend. And then the rest are passing acquaintances. And... Wow, so Ascendo kind of um, is one of the OGs of the fortress here. Was Ascendo one of the original seven? I'm not sure. But the the lever is now linked, so now we can go back to the North Ocean Drain. Right up here. Come up a couple levels. Go back to it right here. We just want to build one wall right there. So that should be an obsidian wall, I hope. Waiting for construction. Once that obsidian wall is complete, uh, let's actually test the north drain right now. Or at least the north drain uh, lever. We're going to test it. Just to be sure. So where's our... Here it is. So pull that lever. Oh, cool. Okay. Very good. Magitism is building the wall. Hopefully they're not trapped in there. Excellent. Very excellent. Magitism did not get trapped. Lever now. Perfect. Now up at the north drain. Um, I have a standalone video on how to do this, um, but basically, the golden minecart is dumping using a track stop, dumping north. So any water that enters the golden mine cart is going to dump to the north into the wall, destroying it just like an Atom Smasher would destroy items. This mine cart drain is going to destroy water in that way. we got three more, one level up. And then we have a ramp here that the dwarves can stand on, a retract bridge here. And this room right here is completely sealed, right? But we're going to dig out just like that. A vile force of darkness has arrived. Okay, we're going to keep the game paused and then just go back to the north drain. Right there. So you can see this when I unpause it. So basically the mine, the dwarves are going to mine through the bridge. They're going to be standing on the ramps here, mining through the bridge to expose the room to the open ocean. So when I unpause the game here, you can see that these jobs are taken even though there's no way into this room right here. Um, it's just a regular mine job. If you do a channel, you're going to drown everybody. And then we're just going to erase the ones that they can't reach. So the miners should be coming along right now. Let's check. I'm going to follow Hero. Let's see. Yeah, it's Mike Oxlong, Saras, Hero. Splinter, Magitism, we'll follow Splinter instead. Fall here earlier. <laughs> Everything's good. He felt fondness to remember talking with a friend. Satisfied at work. Pleasure near his own splendid door. Pleasure near his own wonderful statue. 
Okay, let me just, um, instead of following them, we'll go to the room. So we can watch it. You see that? They're standing right there, but they're mining up through the bridge. I have a very short, like, two-minute video on how to do this. It's called the Bridge Method for Fluid. It's ancient magic. And you see, this room remains dry, and the dwarves have left already. Um, so what we'll do is lock this, this uh, door right here. Um, because now, you see, when I hover the mouse over the bridge here, in the, in the space here, it says, Rough Philite Bridge, Open Space, Saltwater 7-7. Um, so this bridge is completely covered with saltwater on top of it. That's the south drain right here. So the, basically the same thing in the South Ocean. Zoom out a little bit. We're going to go down to um, test in the north drain right now as soon as I find the lever for it. Here it is. Pull the lever. So let's zoom out as far as we can zoom out. And let's take a look at the northern ocean. Come up in the layers a little bit. Um, here it is. That's the very top of it. Oh, look, they just opened the lever. Starting to drain right up here a little bit. It's a big ocean up here. And I really should have done it like 10 tiles instead of 11 tiles long. Should do it. This is the this is the drain room right here. Uh, we can always upgrade the amount of mine carts in there if, if this isn't draining enough. This is just the initial test of it. And uh, we're still at like 12 frames per second. So we'll just let this... Uh, Let's give this a couple minutes to drain. Chill. Actually, you know what? Let's open up the south drain as well. So south drain right here. Pull the lever. And then we'll test both drains and then we'll see how we need to improve on the north and south ocean. Where's the south drain? Oh, south drain is like right here at the very bottom of the ocean. Okay. So you can see even on the mini map that it's uh, that it's down one. Oh yeah, okay, the South Ocean down here, that's opening up as well. Let me zoom in on that a little bit. So this is all open space right here, but this is 7-7 seven, seven water. 17 frames a second? No, oh, we're still getting good frames here. Still getting good frames. Yeah, South Drain is a little bit more powerful. There's more mine carts up here. This one up here only has four mine court carts. And you have to remember that all of the tiles around the exterior of the map here are all source tiles for the water. Just the ones that are like touching the, the edge of the map on the ocean. These are all source tiles. So that's not bad, but we need to increase it. But we'll just give it a couple more minutes. No, 
not really in a rush to uh, close it or anything, you know. Yeah, I think that one, I don't know if it's going to grow any larger than that. That may be the extent that the three minecarts can do. Or four minecarts, how many is it actually? It's four minecarts. If you zoom in on them, it's like, um, it's making mist, and, and you see it's five, seven. That's seven, seven of water, that's five, seven of water, that's because the minecart... The minecart is dumping every tick of the game. Um, I think there's like a... Uh, maybe it's a hundred ticks a second? I'm not entirely sure. But it's a lot of water that it destroys. These very powerful drains. We'll just add another row or a few rows or... Maybe we'll just build a whole other room. We can always build another room down here too. Even though the drains over here, it does kind of drain weird. Like it'll start at the top left, I think. I think it's doing top left in the Southern Ocean as well, is it? Oh, hold up, did we... Oh, wow, okay. So the Southern Ocean, we got at least that much done. The canal itself is going to be like right here. And it's going to go all the way up right through here. See all the mist there? Mist, op open space, and 7-7 seven, seven salt water. It's because all the water's falling. But then it's like being instantly replaced. It's like a huge amount of water that's... It's destroying so fast that it's, it's not registering the graphics. That's crazy, right? <laughs> oh, it's still kind of going on this in the south here. It's like very slowly, very slowly creeping east. I feel like it has to, it has to, this one has to go south more. Like, I feel like it'll stay at that kind of east-west distance, but then it'll, like, the hole should want to touch the southern piece here before it goes east more, I think. Okay, so let's close the, um... Oh yeah, southern drain is about halfway. So I could build it like a second southern drain over on the east side. Maybe. Where's this one? Yeah, it's like sort of on the west or the center. Left of center over there, so maybe I do one over here on the right. That's a good spot for it right there, actually. Right here is a good spot. Nine by five, and then one. And 
then a staircase down right here. Oh, hold on. That one. Race the staircase. New staircase down. Yeah, we'll go down further. We don't necessarily need to go down to negative 22, but the thing about it is, is like, aquifers are usually closer to the surface. So, if I were to like at, or is it negative eight or negative seven here? Oh, it's at negative five. If I were to just like come down a little bit and then cut over right here, there's a, there's a higher chance of the aquifer coming in. So if you remember here in the fir like the first episode when we made this ramp down for the thing, we had to go through a light aquifer to do it. Oh, is this like double? There's like a water drop and then a double water drop. Is that double water drop like a new icon made by DF Hack to tell us it's an aquifer? Is that what's going on here? I think so. Oh, I never finished this part here because we got invaded, but I did create the drain here. So this drain right here is basically the same exact thing, except it's in the center of the canal here. If I zoom out, um, this is going to be the canal. Um, so that way we can drain the canal if we wanted to. I can't do um, multi-Z level bridges. I explained this in an earlier episode. Um, but in order to... In order to make like the locks for the like where the real Panama Canal has like the shipping locks, where you can like s you can raise and lower. Yo, what up, Matthew? Yo, what up? You can raise and lower the water level per lock. So like the ship goes into one area and then they increase the water, raising the ship, and then they open up the channel lock and they go into the next area, right? can't do that in Dwarf Fortress because of uh, pull lever and this one pull lever because there's mul no multi-Z level bridges if I make a bridge that's 30 tiles long that's like a raise to the north bridge right and then I raise it to the north it's only going to make a one one Z level high wall if you understand that Yeah, they are very cool graphics, and, and that was a kind of a surprising addition that I just noticed right now. I'm, I'm like 90% sure that's the case of what's happening here. There was a DF hack update um, that I did not actually read yet. I, I intend to read it at some point, but I haven't actually read it. Um, I know that we can do Legends mode now, um, but just, you know, in playing this fortress, I know that these should be aquifer tiles. Um... This is a wooden log pillar right here, wooden log pillar, and this one is damp yellow sand wool. So that one right there should be an aquifer, and that should just be a damp wooden pillar that we replace to shore up the aquifer. Because as you dig through a light aquifer here, you want to shore it up so it can't flood you. And then here as well. Still got a bunch of invaders on the map, but the fortress is just closed up. Just goblins just chilling up there.
We are draining the oceans. That's what's going on. Where are we? I built this northern ocean drain right here. Um, this one. And we just tested it out. And and now we closed it, so it's currently closed. Because you can see the bridge here. And then you can see that this room is also um, starting to dry up. So what we can do now is unforbid this door. So unlock that door. And then just like upgrade this room here now that we know it's good. So one way that we can do that is... You know, we could just dig longer pathways. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Erase all that. <laughs> so we're going to dig... Uh, yeah, we'll dig an area up here. We'll do it like two. And then we can put more minecarts there. We can also get rid of that one space. Minecraft just have to be facing a wall. It could be facing a wall in any direction. I like to do it personally. I like to do it north. So they're always facing a north wall. So I can build some more back here. And like this way. Should be good like that. Okay, let's go to work orders. Okay, new work order in the um, Metalsmith's Forge. More golden minecarts. Oh, wait, wait, wait. How many do we actually have right now in this stockpile? Yeah, they can dig that. Uh, let's do one more right there. Because I had six in the stockpile. Yeah, I made an order for eight. I already had some in the furniture stockpile before I made the eight order. Um, so I made, I had a bunch in the stockpile, then I ordered eight more. Then I created this stockpile, move four over, I have six in that stockpile. I'm going to set these six. So we'll do six more minecarts, retest it, and then go from there. So the, then the northern drain will be more powerful than the southern. Right? What do we got in the southern drain? Yeah, we got five in the southern drain right now. So that'll mean the northern drain will have ten by the time we're done. So it'll double the power. Whenever you do this, it's like this one right here that's like one level lower than all the rest of them. That's like the super important one because that'll drain out the room that you're actually working in here. Without this one here, then this room would stay five, seven of water. You know what I mean? So let's build, construct, 
track stop. Dump to the north. Right there. Dump to the north, right there. All across the top row here. Always dumping to the north. And then we can also do some down here as well. Without DF hack, once you build the track stop, you can't change the direction, I believe. Frido, the former, has created Kavist Len Lilum. Kavist Lilum, an obsidian toy hammer. She offers it to the Channel of Savages. Excellent. Get units. I think Frito is a new member of the fortress, I believe. Semi new. Where? Okay, this room right here. One, two, three. Furniture and uh, display case right there. Oh, yeah, we need more chests and coffers. So Frito's getting that, and let's take a look at the artifact. Yeah, this is the right one. This is an obsidian toy hammer. All crest horsemanship is of the highest quality. It is decorated with willow and goose bone and encircled with bands of table cut jelly opals. This object is adorned with hanging rings of obsidian and menaces with spikes of dog leather. On the item is an image of Melbill wound fences, the dwarf and dwarves in billion. Melbill is surrounded by the dwarves. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Mill Bill surrounded where we're in by the of loss of position from here. The artwork relates to the ascension of the dwarf Mill Bill Wonder fin Fences to the position of Queen of the Wild Arrow in 71. On the item is an image of Well Bill, the dwarf, and dwarves in smoky quartz. She's surrounded by the dwarves. The artwork relates to the ascension of the dwarf Mill Bill to the position of Queen of the Wild Arrow in 71. Okay, so it's two images of the same, just different materials. On the item is an image of three catapult parts in dog leather. Very excellent. Very excellent. Okay, back to the bedrooms. Excuse me. Assign a new item to display. Fredo here. Relations. Deity is Anan, passing acquaintance with uh, many of the dwarves. Watching cooking demonstration currently, 85 years old. Hi, Master Milker, Master Pump Operator. Adept Cook. She was interested in having an intellectual discussion with an acquaintance. So like in the gold the guild hall now like she's socializing right now or he is um the socializing in the guild hall is going to lead to more relations 
So eventually, uh, maybe they'll become friends with the Amonzio, maybe they'll become friends with Cog or DR. As they hang out, you know? What is that? Seahorse? <laughs> Okay, cool. All these track stops are created. Um, so we just need to really do the routes for them. North Drain 5. Right there. North range six, right there. North range seven. Eight right there. North train nine. So that's five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten right here. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Forge a gold mine car to Sendo. Naz is placing the track vehicle. Yeah, that's right. It's um it's basically like a Atom Smasher. It's very, very close similar to the same principle as Atom Smasher. Except it's like dumping it into the wall instead of smashing it into the floor. You guys can hear the music, right? This is this audio is kind of okay. Like the levels are good. I feel like we we got the levels right, but just checking. Naz is placing the uh, Naz is the mayor. Place the track vehicle. Nice. 
Okay, hold on. Let's go back up to that. Splinter. Oh, very cool. Okay. Because I normally I'll play with the music volume off. So if I go into the settings, like I'll keep sound effects on, I'll keep uh, like atmosphere on or whatever, and turn the music off and then just re-add the music later on in editing. I feel like that is always super loud though. Like that forgotten beast message, if I go into the settings here, and then audio... I feel like I turn the... That should be sound effect volume, it should be lower, you know? Oh, okay. Excellent. Over in um, Streamlabs, I think I have the, the computer audio set to like a few decibels lower than the mic. Hero is also placed in a track vehicle. Oh yeah, so these ones are all ta these guys are all taking the uh, Naz and Hero and Splinter. They all took it out of that initial stockpile that we made. The closer one it does like half of the work is done already. Nice, okay, two more, two more to go and then we'll retest. Job, forge gold mine card to send no, the other job hasn't been picked up yet. I agree that the, that alert should be louder, um, but I should still be able to adjust it. You know what I mean? Yeah, so a lot of things that... Um, one problem that a lot of new players run into is the dwarves dehydrating or dying of thirst. Mm or somehow like getting real thirsty and usually how that happens is that they have like a very very long uh, staircase down to the bottom and then somehow like one of their craft dwarfs is holding a stone by hand from the bottom like super bottom where the magma sea is up to the fortress and taking like a long path like because when they carry heavy stuff he's moving a lot slower carrying this minecart it's a heavy minecart um, you see after he puts it down, we'll follow Mike here, and after he puts it down, he's going to move like triple the speed faster because he's not holding anything, or he's compared to the cat there.
Um, but in the time that it's taken him to move this, he's getting thirstier and thirstier and more tired, you know? And if, and if the path is way too long, then he, he could die. At least it was like that in the past. I saw um, somebody drop a minecart about halfway earlier. Um, but norm but in the past they're used to complete the task. Let's see. He's gonna put it and then he's gonna now he's regular speed again. He's gonna drink as well. And Northern Drain has been upgraded here. So we're going to lock this door and retest the draining of the Northern Ocean. What is this? F5 is the Southern Drain. So let me go back to, let me just go back to set this as F6 here. Yeah, right here. Damn it. I had my caps lock on. So everything was like reversed. So F6 we're going to set right here. Okay. Pull the lever. Still the druids pulling the lever to drain the northern ocean. Excellent. Yeah, you see how fast it filled up? <laughs> now we got the power of ten mine carts draining. It's going a lot faster. Okay, excellent, very excellent. So this is a shelf here that it that the water is like getting stopped at. Right here. Just let this uh percolate here. <laughs> yeah, right? It's cool, right? <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Appreciate you uh, and everyone else who has joined me on this stream. We're going to just let it sit here for a couple minutes and see how, how much of the ocean actually drains with these 10 minecarts. It'll go up until it hits open space, so like th this is no longer... Like that's open space right there. Let me zoom in here so you can see better. The water that used to be on this tile right here, or any of these tiles that already drained, just fell. Uh, but the tile here, the water can't fall because there's ground there, so it has to use the north, south, east, west calculation to move off of the 
shelf and then fall. Because it'll always move down before it moves to the side. <laughs> Pull the lever, Kronk! Northern Ocean is a lot bigger than the Southern Ocean, or at least on our site map. Yeah, we'll see. Now that it, like, it did this whole area, then it should start doing this up here now, and then coming down. Maybe. Maybe it has enough power. Yeah, see? It'll do this section, and then it should go all the way south until it can't really go anymore. And then it'll, and then it'll do this section and go all the way south. Still getting decent FPS. Fifteen isn't bad. Not bad at all. It'll be faster if I wasn't looking at uh, such complicated things. So if I come out like over here, where nothing's moving, and then like zoom in all the way, FPS should go up higher. I scroll down in the layer, yeah, right here. Should be able to calculate like slightly faster because the camera's not focused on that area. Yeah, now we're up to 17. So let's see where we're actually going to be digging the canal in the north here. I think it's like right here. Yeah. Right up through this area. Seems like we're going to be good. Right there at least. I want to do one more layer down. It'll stabilize too. Like once it's like completely done draining, it'll like re re it should reach like an equilibrium. Like an FPS equilibrium, I believe. So after it does this area, it should do this. You see every so often on the edges, water's like still falling into the zone.
Deviling Swimmer. Was that Samwise right there? Samwise Ganja. Meditate on the night. I just want to slow down and take it easy for a while. It's worrisome. Was that metalwork in shop? Weapons, silver, battle axe, repeat. Yeah, we got way more wood, so we don't need wood anytime soon. Oh, that's Zariki. The dwarven child playing in the middle forge. Copper picks. Create them. Let's do uh, like 25. Four giant battle axe already there. Oh, it's going well. How are you? It's going very well. We're draining the Northern Ocean right now. I'm just setting up some jobs to make some tools. Copper battle axes, steel battle axe, copper pick, iron battle axe. Um, I think that silver is on repeat, but I think I'm going to make a job for it anyway, just so I can track it. Silver battle axe, 25. Who dat, who dat, who dat? Ozma the Rid. Uh, we got a couple artifacts in as well. Bunch of artifacts were created. Um, like a puzzle box and a toy hammer and a scepter as well. Let me go back up to the ocean, see how the ocean drain in the north is doing. Oh, very cool. So if it can do this whole row and this whole row, then it's going to go down, and then it's going to start draining here as well. I think with these 10 minecarts, we have 10 minecarts down in the drain right here. This is the drain for the ocean in the north. Uh, we can make it faster with more minecarts, or if we made like a second drain off to the side here, well, that'll make it faster too. 
So then we'll go into the um, another work order here. Metalsmith's Forge. Golden Mine Cart. And 10 more of those. Uh, you know, we'll make it nine. Nine golden mine cards. Because this. Um, stockpile that we have, like halfway. Or you know what, we'll just expand this stockpile. We'll just expand this stockpile. Instead of just making nine at a time, we'll expand it. Because we have a lot of gold. Let's do 20. Oh, a diplomat left unhappy. Damn. But well, we are under siege still as well. We just have the whole fortress is just closed to the surface. Primitive has become a pump operator, as well as DR and Frido has become a farmer. It's the 24th of Timber in late autumn of the year 156. See units and uh, heroes digging. A bunch of the doors are coming up here to dig. Excellent. Very excellent. So this stockpile right here is minecart only, or golden minecarts only, and it has a take from order, the larger furniture stockpile. Um, so when minecarts are created, they're brought to the first close furniture stockpile, then transferred to this stockpile, which is about half of the distance up to the northern drain. Because if they were going to take it like from that other stockpile to the northern drain directly, it's a very, very long path. Where um, I think it's like too much for them to do in one go. So we're digging out this room a little bit more. And then we're going to extend, expand that stockpile. We could do another one down here. I just won't set anything for it, but I'll just like designate the room to be dug out like that. And then two doors. And then what we'll do is focus on the northern drain until it's complete. 
and then we can delete this stockpile completely and then remake it in this location right here in the south. Okay, just about complete. Okay, this room right here, or stockpile, I'm gonna expand it. And it's close enough. Somebody with OCD is gonna be like, why didn't you? No, it has to be a rectangle. <laughs> no, what are you doing? Finish the square off. Okay, let's see the strain right here. Yeah, if you look at the mini map here, it's. You can see it on the mini map too. It's starting to go right here. Top right. Is there something there underneath? No. Okay. That may be as powerful as it is. Right there. Because you see like every so often we got we got water coming in on the sides here. And on the on the top and bottom and the sides. See that? That's how the water actually empty, enters the map. It's not like, not like in Minecraft water, you know. Can I make myself a world with? more first layer rock layers to get more z levels per space more z level space um you know what there is a there's a command called infinite sky it's a do it's a df hack command called infinite sky i don't know if it's working yet in the new version of df hack in version 47.5 infinite sky still works so you can have whatever map you want use the infinite sky command and then build as high as you want. You can build it 300 layers into the sky if you wanted or more. Um, I have a video on that for version 47.5 at least. Yeah, it looks like it looks like this is the extent of what ten minecarts draining the northern ocean can do at this time. It looks like it's not doing any more, right? Let's get into the shelf here. But I mean, it drained all of this though. Like this is all open space that used to be 7-7 seven, seven water. Hey, have a great night, Steven.
Um, I don't think that we're going to be streaming for much longer than this. Um, looks like I've been streaming for like an hour, uh, three and three hours and forty-five minutes almost. Yeah, it looks about that. So I'm probably going to go as well soon. <laughs> we're still at thirteen FPS. Still good. But I appreciate you stopping by. I appreciate all the support that you give the channel. Have a great night. Oh, it's okay. So it's going a little bit more now. We finally got rid of the top corner. Okay. So we'll just uh, we'll just let it go a little bit longer there. Just look at something else here while we. So we're not like waiting for the pot to boil, you know. So units and. Forge Steel Battle Axe, Black Gate. Also zoom in. Because the more zoomed out you are, um, the more things you can see, but also the more graphics it actually process, and the slower the FPS is. This is that main furniture stockpile I was talking about earlier. Yeah, the only thing with the minecart uh, drainage that you have to watch out for is that if you have a uh, if you have like an artificial river like this um, that you're trying to get power off of, um, this can actually produce power if it's not draining off. It has to drain off the map in order to produce the power. If it was just going to a minecart uh, minecart drain at the end here, then um, this would not be tagged as flowing water. And these uh, water wheels wouldn't actually turn, even though the water does flow. You know what I mean? But like down here in the swim trainer, right here, the, the these are minecart drains right here that are perfectly balancing this right here at five seven depth, which is the perfect depth for training dwarves how to swim. Whenever they get that push minecart job on this, they just go around once, gain a little bit of swim experience, and then it dumps them out without getting hurt. And then it also dumps the water back with this uh, into this drain right here, which I did this part right here at the very beginning of the stream. Um, just I don't think that 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 many dwarves are doing the uh, this forge golden minecart. Praise the sun, praise the sun, forging a golden minecart. I don't think we looked at praise the sun at all today. Do not hide yourself behind an unfeeling mask. <laughs> The embark space for this fortress is either 3 or 4 by 11. So it's like 3 or 4 wide and 11 north and south. Uh, if I go to the world map here, uh, we are right here. The fortress is right here on in Panama. And this um, like earth map that we have here. Um, I created like a short video on how to actually get the, this map into your game. It's like five minutes long. It's called the Earth Map Tutorial. And I believe it's in the playlist of this uh, Panama Canal Fortress. But right now we're doing the Panama Canal right here. That's the fortress. I don't know if I can zoom in on this map. Yeah, I can't zoom in on the world map at all. That's okay though. Australia's got some volcanoes here. And you know what? Looks like we got some uh, Greenland volcanoes too. That look interesting to me. Alaska volcano. But yeah, there's a short tutorial that I did. There's so many tutorials that I made on Dwarf Fortress that... 
Um, it's a lot to check out. Like I've drained the ocean before. There's a, there's like a shorter, um, like five minute video or maybe it's eight minutes. One had to drain the, drain the, uh, I flooded the entire map. I made magma guns. I'm um, using minecarts that shoot magma into like a kill chamber. And, um, I've even shot magma out into the ocean to create an island. Yeah, I think that, you know what, I think that this looks like, this looks like it's uh, the struggling to drain more of the ocean here, so I think we're going to turn the drain off. Northern drain, pull the lever. Should we watch it fill up? I think so. So they're going to close the drain and we'll watch how, how fast it refills. Very shortly they're going to do it. We should be able to tell once the once they pull the lever. There they go. There it goes right there. They pulled the lever. <laughs> now the ocean is refilling. Excellent. Very excellent. So I'm going to have to upgrade this drain more. So just more minecarts. We'll put another row here, another row here. Um, I can always do a, a second drain that's like off to the side over here that would help speed it up because it's like in a separate location altogether, you know? Um, a lower one would also help as well. This spot right here, it, just quick glance, looks like a good spot for it. Uh, there's a link to my Discord if, if anybody's not in the Discord and wants to go in there. There's a There's a link to it in the description of this video and I appreciate everybody who stopped by and checked out the uh, fortress here and the progress on it and um, everybody who regularly supports the channel and if you're watching this VOD later on thank you very much as well um, but uh, yeah I think I'm going to uh, end the stream so I appreciate it Thank you very much, Saltwater Aquifer, Stephen N, Diarmond, Diarmundin. I, I don't know how to say that. I'm sorry. I don't know how to say your name. <laughs> Gogu, appreciate it. Chris B, I appreciate you stopping by. P4, Malik Childish, everybody who stopped by, and sorry if I missed your name there. 
Semtexagon was here as well. Appreciate you stopping by. Mike Taylor, appreciate you stopping by. I'm trying to get better at live streaming. Um, so the the next the next um, installment of Dwarf Fortress Panama Canal episode 12 that may also be a live stream. Uh, I'm trying to get better at it, so we'll see. Maybe next weekend, may possibly even during the week. Uh, have a great weekend. Have a great night, everyone. Bye.